Okay. Um, so I'll be doing uh, Google Analytics and WordPress, although it should be really titled Google Tag Manager and WordPress. Uh, although I don't think, how many of you all know, okay, I guess it's more of like familiarity kind of thing. How many of you all know Google Analytics? Google Tag Manager? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> So that's why um, it's supposed to be um, more on Google Tag Manager on how to use Google Tag Manager to do Google Analytics and other stuff as well. So a bit more about me, uh, just now uh, John has already introduced me uh, on what I do at work. But uh, some of, a bit of myself is that I'm a WordPress enthusiast. I do uh, WordPress um, development and maintenance work, uh, server administration work on the side as well. I also went through um, Google Squared Data Program. I'm one of the initial batch uh, for the program. So uh, technically, I'm supposed to know Google Analytics and Google Tech Manager well. But uh, my day job, I'm there for about a year plus already. So most of my knowledge is now on Adobe Analytics and Adobe uh, Dynamic uh, Tech Manager, <coughs> which is their own uh, offerings. Uh, so my day job, what I do is uh, like what I say, uh, it's an analytics consultancy. We do services like planning or for your um, uh, for your analytics. How to how to uh, do a how 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 to properly uh, implement your ana uh, analytics on the website or on your uh, assets. We do the implementation as well. That's where I come in. I do I help clients to do implementation. Um, give them advice on the technical uh, side of the implementation. Reporting is basically uh, what you see on your Google Analytics dashboard and a bit more as well. We do um, custom customized um, reports. Uh, we also train staff of our client for our clients. Uh, we do consulting as well. Uh, sometimes our clients will ask us, hey, uh, based on this um, uh, data, what kind of um, actionable insights that we can get from there? What kind of possible uh, things we can do? Um, the solutions we offer are basically Adobe Analytics, Adobe Tech Management Manager, Adobe Target. Adobe Target is a um, personalization um, solution where you can offer A-B um, testing uh, or multiple, multiple uh, person, personalized uh, experiences, setup, <coughs> stuff like that. We also do Google Analytics, Google Tech Manager, but only on if our clients are uh, insist on doing that because of their legacy issues or, or of uh, cost issues and stuff like that. Um, we also do Optimizely, which is, uh, I would say, um, the more for value for money version of uh, Adobe Analytics, uh, sorry, Adobe uh, Target and Observe Point. Observe Point is a tool that we use to help with uh, running an, an audit for um, uh, web and mobile uh, properties. My role there is a digital analyst, which what I do is implementation. So what is the agenda is that uh, basically I'm just going to run through <coughs> which analytics platform to choose for your self or your uh, property. Uh, why to use a tech manager and how Google Tech Manager works, how to set up GTM in WordPress and setting up Google Analytics in uh, GTM. We also uh, go in brief on the debugging aids that you can use in order to um, find out why some things don't work and why some things work too well. Um, and also what are some of the next steps you can consider. So basically, why what uh, analytics platform you choose is, yeah, it boils down to five key uh, factors. One, the first one is your stakeholders. Who signs <coughs> off? Yeah, who signs off um, the, 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 the um, who will be the one signing off the platform? Uh, that's the key, one of the key stakeholders. Who was, the next second uh, key stakeholders will be who are the ones using the platform? Are they um, the marketing per person or the business person? What are they aiming to get out from there? We have to ask them all these kind of questions because different analytics platform, they honestly have their own um, strengths and uh, weaknesses. The next one would be the business requirement um, and goals. You should both uh, should support both immediate company requirements, as in your within one year, what kind of 
metrics you want to get out from from this analytics platform and what kind of future goals you want to get out from there like say maybe for now you have a very static website or say like hi i have a new product coming out soon and in the future is like hi this is my product now buy buy my product so what kind of goals you want to get out from there from now and in the future and also what kind of access or data we would like to have certain analytics platform like Adobe Analytics to give 100% full access to your um, data whereas Google Analytics you would have to twist a bit here and there if um, you are drawing out too much data from them they will cap your data they will do some sampling for Google Analytics um, but it can be done it's just uh, more of a hassle and also how you want the reporting to be done you want it to be done within a dashboard itself, like Google Analytics dashboard itself. It can, it might be limiting, or you want, you might want to use a third-party tool like um, uh, like a third party, sorry, like a third-party uh, business intelligence tool, uh, like Tableau software or uh, Quick software, right? So the next, so you have to consider these factors. Well, how much access can you get from there? The next thing will be data governance. So when we talk about data governance, it's not basically saying like, hey, this is my data, don't touch it. It's more of like, how do you want to get the data, the, uh, the data out right from scratch until the end? Um, what kind of, um, how, you want, how, 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 you, how, how you want to see the data to be uh, put into the database, how you want the data to come out. It's basically an overall strategy to, of maintain processes and that handles uh, proper handling of data throughout the organization. So sometimes you might have someone new on board and they will place in random values like maybe inside your home type, uh, inside uh, one of the values that you want to track. Like the simplest one would be like um, your home page, your page title and they come up with a random string of text that you do not understand what they, what, uh, that you will not understand until you dig much further. That will take a lot of time as well. The support and the resources that the company, that the platform will provide is also a key thing. Tech management is also another thing and usability and security. All these are, are, are stuff that all analytics platform uh, providers, they actually provide. It's a matter of how personalized that uh, you are, how personalized the support you're going to get from them. Like from Google Analytics, it might, if you're on a free plan, you might not get support at all from them. Uh, usually, we rely on the community in order to help with uh, certain issues. Whereas for Adobe Analytics or for some other uh, fully paid uh, premium uh, solutions, you get personalized one-to-one uh, -one support or the entire, basically you have an entire team to support you when um, shit hits the fan. Yeah. The next two thing to consider will be program integration. Like, what is your existing marketing toolkit, right? So, if you're using uh, a very, very <coughs> tightly uh, integrated uh, toolkit like uh, Adobe Marketing Cloud, which is Adobe um, Analytics and Adobe um, Target and Tech Management is a part of, usually we we'll just go ahead with the same um, vendor. But if you're running very uh, uh, quite um, customized um, Toolkit, this concern is not there. You might want to use Google Analytics with Optimizely or um, some other uh, 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 third party tools. So, all these uh, stuff you have to consider. Next thing will be the cost uh, how much you want to pay out uh, now or in the future. So, I can tell you upfront that for Google Premium or now they call it Google 360, right? It's about uh, hundred and fifty thousand, uh, but the free is free, uh, But you won't get as much feature as the three sixty. Uh, Google Adobe Analytics is about uh, minimally ten k twenty k per uh, per month. So if you are in the enterprise level, going to the enterprise level, that's a cost you're going to settle. But if all of you here are SMEs or small companies, small that's like sorry, just go with Google Analytics, uh. Yeah. So why a tech manager? I'll first talk about text first, right? Text are basically snippets of codes placed either in the header or footer. 
sometimes can be very dynamically placed, like maybe you'll click a button, then a attack will appear. They enable third party tracking, analysis and reporting. And this includes like Google Analytics, double click, Adobe Analytics, Optimizely on some others like uh, Facebook Analytics as well, or Facebook Insights or Facebook Pixels. All these are considered tags. You might not uh, notice them, but for Google, this is an example from Google Analytics. This is just one tag. Imagine if you run a fully, uh, 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 imagine that you're running a, 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 a website with a lot of marketing campaigns going on with multiple vendors. Uh, going on um, with multiple vendors, you will have 20, 30 tags on the website itself. Um, I came from a media industry uh, when I was in Google Analytics, a uh, Google Square Data program. So when we open the client's web page, you can easily see 20, 30 tags from multiple marketing vendors, remarketing -mark -re vendors, um, uh, primary social sites, all these kinds of things all start to come out. And it's actually a hassle if you think of it, if you, uh, you have to get your um, IT guy to, to say, to, to come down and do the um, development. <coughs> so it actually bonds out of increasing need for more agile marketing measurement and tracking ability. So what happens is that before, what happens before is, before using a tech manager is that when you plan an online media buy, uh, it's basically when you plan an online marketing, uh, you want to buy AdWords or maybe uh, Facebook ads. And then you realize that your website has no, doesn't have the required, um, tracking codes that the vendor uh, needs, right? So you have to ask your IT person, your IT guy or IT team to say, hey, uh, I need this tracking code to be on the on this web page. And depending on how your IT team is structured, how what's the development stru uh, cycle structure, if they are on an agile uh, basis, it's typically a week, which is fast. But for a lot of companies, especially the SMEs or the bigger companies where your SMEs, they might not have a dedicated resource, so they might engage an outside person or outside agency to do this. It can take a month because it becomes a waterfall kind of uh, implementation. And in bigger companies, like some of my clients right now, at work, they are, the MN, uh, MNCs, the development will take about one and a half months, two months kind of thing. So imagine two months, for these two months, you can't do anything. You can't buy your, uh, your, your uh, advertising, uh, uh, stuff because you have no way to track the effectiveness. So, with a Google, with setting up Google Tag Manager or any other tag managers, what you can do is basically plan your online buys, your online market uh, media buys, and get the required scripts from tracking scripts from the uh, vendor. Use a tag manager, place a script in the tag manager, and um, because all this will bypass the IT, the normal usual IT development. Uh, uh, flow, it can be done in a week, typically, uh. yeah, so, uh, how does Google Tag Manager works? It's from bottom up, bottom is a data layer, then we have the variables, triggers, and tags, right? So data layer is basically a piece of uh, JavaScript code, it's usually a uh, JavaScript object or array that exposes the required information for the tech manager to pick up. So it can be, uh, it can be a uh, var, it's a JavaScript code, so it can be var data layer equals to uh, post title. And you have the post title, comma, um, URL, and the URL comes out, and whatever other stuff you, you want from there. Next is variables. They call that variables uh, inside Google Tech Manager. It's basically a name pair value, which uh, the value is populated during a runtime. When I say runtime, it means when Google Managers um, starts uh, to load on your website. So they draw information from not only a data layer, but from other um, other other uh, sources like custom JavaScript. You can run custom JavaScripts to manipulate some data out from your uh, web page. Let's say for some reason or another, you do not have the author name inside the data inside that data layer inside a JavaScript code what you get what you can do is that you um, do some screen crawling um, sc uh, screen scraping to pick up the author name from the article 
Right. Uh, the next one would be triggers. Triggers are conditions where text will fire. So triggers is the, the way that they structure triggers is actually very, very fluid. You can trigger it on page load or on certain events or even on button clicks or on uh, uh, you, uh, video plays, stuff like that. And text are basically your Google Analytics text or your um, media text, right? So um, for WordPress, there are actually a lot of plugins right now that um, set up that will allow you, help you set up with a Google Tab uh, Manager very, with relatively ease. So my favorite is actually uh, this Tab Manager, uh, this this plugin called Duracell Tommy's <coughs> Google Tab Manager for WordPress. Uh, the main reason why it's my favorite is because it's one of the first <coughs> first plugins that came out. I didn't really explore the other tab managers, uh, management plugins, but it is very flexible in the sense that um, the data that they'll pull out into the data layer includes post information, the various post information, your title, your author, your when you publish, when you update and stuff like that, everything is there. It even has weather information if you want to if you want the weather information to be exposed for certain reasons, like maybe you are offering uh, umbrellas on your website and if the weather if the weather is inclement you can something comes up with an offer to say that hey this is 20% uh, off for umbrella or something like this uh, yeah but who will buy umbrellas on my website so, yeah. <laughs> next will be browser information if you want to discriminate uh, between the different browsers like you want to give people using chrome uh, offer a where there's 50% off and people using safari uh, forty percent off, uh, but mo most most of the time, uh, browser information is used to determine what kind of issues that will come up for personalization setup. Because personalization setup, you have to do a lot of uh, browser testing, and sometimes in the rush to implement uh, personalized personalization setup, you might miss out one browser or two during your testing phase, and um, this kind of information will be useful for debugging. Uh, next one will be me media player events. Media player events are basically YouTube plays. When you start, when you stop, how long you do, how long do you play for? Uh, in terms of percentage and stuff like that. Um, scroll sh scroll tracking is basically page tracking from right from the start to the end. How long does a reader read your 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 uh, article? Do you scroll too fast or do you scroll too slow or do you even complete scrolling at all? Um, it also has integration with Contact Form 7 and WooCommerce, which I find it pretty cool because it actually saves a lot of work for me uh, when I do implementation. So, uh, let me show you the back end. This is my own site. Uh, I use it a lot for uh, playing around with different tools and plugins and what's not. So if you see my setting, I actually have a lot of different stuff going on at the same time. So for Google Tab Manager, that uh, plugin is basically just like that. Tabs that is uh, uh, organized in accordingly to what they are meant for and doing. Okay, even blacklist text if you want to. Yeah, so you can run a contact form integration. I have a contact form 7, uh, a basic contact me form. Uh, so I click that to to do the uh, tracking itself. You can even change this if uh, data layer name, but typically we won't advise changing it. Uh, you can scroll a lot of stuff and some of the credits. Right. So moving on, all right. So setting up Google uh, Tag Manager, it's basically 
you go to Google Tech Manager uh, website, techmanager.google.com, right? And you set up, after you set up, you come up with a container and um, in this container, it has this very nice material design uh, that displays out. The first thing that will catch your eye is create a new tag. Next thing it's uh, what's the description? I'm because this is for myself. I lazy put description, but the latest one should be um, uh, published for production use, stuff like that. Or if you have media text that's in there, you can say or oh, um, just added Facebook text on it. Editing you have uh, workspace workspaces. I will not uh, although the feature is there, but I wouldn't encourage using uh, workspace too much because it actually confuses uh, people. Uh, every time you publish the workspace, let's say you use a second workspace, right, to do a lot of tinkering, and when you publish a workspace, the workspace actually disappears. Yeah, and it merge, and it goes into this semi merging mode to back into a default uh, uh, workspace, uh, waiting to be merged into there. It's a uh, hassle to do with. So we do not. I wouldn't recommend using workspace. Uh, there are also versionings. So one good thing about the versioning is that you can actually see that right now it's version five. If your version five, if let's say my version five is screwed up, I can actually go back, roll back to version four, right? So if I right now in version five I have a lot of changes here, but if it screws up, right, I can just do a wholesale rollback because I might not be able to figure out what went wrong. And uh, when I do a rollback, it will be uh, useful uh, so that there is minimal downtime. Yeah, so I can actually change over here. Uh, is it change here? No. Change here, yeah, Act under actions to set as latest version. Yeah. Okay. Then... Back main. Yeah, so this is an interface. So text are basically think right now there's only Google text, Google Analytics text, and some other text that I've set up to do scroll tracking or contact form completion. So these are the text. Triggers are very descriptive, like where you trigger. One thing is that you have to set all pages if you want. Set up all pages to match for all URLs. Otherwise, you'll not be able to trigger uh, anything. Yeah, and variables are here where there is a list of like click classes, click elements, all these clicks. Uh, I would suggest enabling debug mode so it won't actually affect uh, <coughs> um, stuff. Um, your 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 your. What's it called? You won't actually affect your uh, your your production setup too much. Yeah. Okay, and folders are basically a way to organize your stuff, like, But I don't do this that, right? Okay. So when you set up Google Analytics in GTM, right? So these are just some of the pro tips. To one is to create two properties, analytics properties in your Google Analytics account. By default, everyone will be usually use like UA dash. One two three four five dash one, uh, but if you're going to do a lot of testing and stuff like that, it's going to pollute your production uh, data, which might not be useful for your uh, analysis. So what I will recommend, what a lot of people recommend, is actually to create two properties. So you have a dash two, where you can use that debug mode to. Um, to do a, a, a simple lookup to find that, oh, it's a debug mode, therefore I will use dash two instead for testing. So that you will not pollute your production data. Okay. Uh, second one is to make heavy use of the data layers and variables for uh, <coughs> your uh, triggers. And third one is to be aware of what the plugins can offer you when you use WordPress. Uh, this in a sense that uh, certain plugins, like especially Contact Form Seven, I like that because they have a lot. It, the the author 
Delta had uh, actually exposes exposed a lot of um, custom events where you can actually use to do uh, analytics tagging, events tagging, in order to to find. <coughs> so you don't actually need to uh, rework, like say I need to track this. I need to track a submit button in order to get to 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 see in order to see whether it's a successful submit or not and stuff like that. There's already a custom event there. Basically, it's just CF. Every every PCF seven um, successful summit. That's it. Yeah. So be aware of what plugins plugins you use, and what can they offer you. Right. Debugging aids. Um. The first, if you're using Google Tag Management Manager, right, or even Google Analytics, the 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 um. Faster, the, the best one is actually Google Tech Assistant that is created by Google themselves. Uh, it's very comprehensive. There's a screenshot of the page, so I, I can show you on here as well. So let's say on the live side. Right. Uh, right now I'm in preview mode. So in preview mode, it actually pops up with this very nice overlay of saying uh, what texts are there. Right now, there's a Google UAA uh, Universal Analytics that's been fired. What variables are there? Um, so it says here, uh, select a data layer message. So you select this message here, and it will show you what kind of uh, information that has been fired and stuff like that. The data layers. Right, so this data layers actually shows you what information are there. So let's say now I go to my tag. Okay, <coughs> uh, let me go to an article. Where is the article? Yes. Okay, this article is long enough to show. Okay, so uh, now there's one more tag that says uh, article loaded. So basically, this will only fire if it's a post. Previously, it's a home page, or if you go to contact us, contact me or about page, uh, page you will not be able to see this firing. And when I scroll this, you will see uh, articles start reading. Um, and when I scroll all the way to the bottom, right, somewhere here, you will see you will fire an end reading uh, <coughs> tag. So all these are actually events tags here, and if you go to a real time view, you can actually see them firing here just now in the last thirty minutes. Yeah, so the load start and end. Yeah. So uh, all this information you can actually go, go to go through your audience uh, acquisition and behavior to slowly look through and do your reporting and stuff like that. Okay, so that is Google Tag Manager, uh, and here as well. Sorry, yeah. Here is very basic, showing you what tags are there for from Google. There are also other tags like from Observe Point. They have their own tag manager. Uh, the links are in subsequent uh, slides. I'll put the slides up later so you can see, uh, so you can reference uh, and read some of the resources that I actually went through to get some of this uh, information up for you all as well. Omi, but and also do not neglect uh, what is inside the browser like the uh, JavaScript console or the network console because all these actually have uh, are actually quite powerful tools to uh, do the debugging. So if I go to inspect and see, right? It right now it just says uh, uh, console, but for certain tech manager or you, uh, you can actually set uh, customize um, uh, console dot log messages to see whether the text are firing properly or not. And you go to um, network. Let's say if you do not have observe point. This is an observe point uh, tag, right? So observe point tag actually shows you other things as well, like WordPress stats, the WordPress pixel stats comes out as well. 
But if you do not have all this and you are using a clean browser, you can actually just <coughs> search for um, Google's uh, um, for, for for the for for the URLs that Google for the image that Google sends over. So for Google Analytics, it's basically triple w dot google dot uh, dash analytics dot com slash collect. Yeah, and it so happens that collect is the only uh, this URL only has is when you fire this URL is the only one that has the word collect. So I, that's why I use collect as the filter. Uh, but one thing about network is the network panel is that it's not a very friendly kind of um, of of of, of uh, reading. You have to decipher what's DL, what's UL, what's DE, right? It's not. It's not. They're not going to say this is a page name. This is, this is your language and stuff like that. Because um, this itself, this entire string itself, is a resource to them. If it's too long, the server will not accept. You get truncated. They won't get the necessary information. Yeah. So, for this, uh, after probably after a while of debugging and reading through and stuff, documentation and stuff, probably will f figure this out easy uh, with. Uh, but with easier, um, with yeah, easy, easily lah. Okay, yeah, more familiar with it. Yeah, thanks for it. Right, so the next steps, one is to start planning on your analytics setup. Honestly, this should be your first step. Uh, plan for your setup first. Do not, do not implement Google Analytics. Uh without knowing what you want to set up. You can do the basic setup of the, just the on-page load, but if you want to start thinking about like uh, search or uh, contact us, button clicks, all these kind of things, you have to start planning because uh, events tracking, all this kind of stuff, they are actually very, very um, resource intensive. So for Google Analytics, what they do is that for the first 10 or 20 events, I can't remember the exact number, they actually just track everything at one shot. But after that, they only will track one <coughs> event per second, per session. So if you have a lot of events firing, let's say for some unknown reason, you want to track every single second of, every, every single second of a person watching a YouTube, uh, YouTube video on your page, right? After the first 10 seconds, right, you will not be able to see the same kind of flow coming in and the information will not be actually useful to you. You might be only be interested when it start, when it start watching and where it's, where it end up, uh, uh, where, where it end, uh, stop watching. Yeah. So, if you don't know how, engage consultants. Uh, and also to read up on the analytics, Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager documentation. What I have covered just now, uh, in the short 20, 15, 20 minutes. It's just a tip of the iceberg. It's just, I would say it's 1%. Uh, the documentation actually offers a lot of stuff. Uh, I honestly didn't touch Google Analytics for about a year already. And when I come back and see, I was like, I was shocked because it's totally, it's the, the inside there, about 40% of stuff is foreign to me already. Yeah, so always, Always <laughs> look at documentation. Yeah. And questions? <laughs> yeah, in terms of plugins, the, the one that you were talking about was Jurisco uh, Commons, that's for GTA. Yes. Um, Monster Insights for Google, that's where you would only set up the <coughs> links to Google. Yeah. Would so you use them both? Or no. Uh, you use either one of it. The reason being is that um, GTM will actually have Google Analytics set uh, set in, inside it already. So if you see inside here, right under text, it's already set up inside <coughs> here. So if you use the any other plugins to, right now it says uh, GA property, but it's actually, trust me, it's actually uh, the, the tracking code. Um, so if you use any other plugins, right, you're going to have the tracking codes been embedded in the website two times or even three times, depending on how many plugins you are using. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is like a super set. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay, so the beauty of this is that it's supposed to be loading asynchronously uh, away from the main thread. So uh, instead of slowing down, you actually should speed up your website. Like at the start, when I say that um, I've, I have clients who have like 20, 30 texts firing, they were firing, uh, they were firing synchronously on the page itself before they move on to the text management service, uh, uh, for, before they move on to the text manager. So before that, it, it were like loading easily a minute, two minutes. But after taking all these text out and loading the text asynchronously, it cuts down to 30 seconds. Because it's not going to, it's, it's not a blocking, uh, it's not going to block the execution of your JavaScript anymore. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, okay. So for that, you actually can use, uh, you can actually set up a tag to fire <coughs> on, say maybe your content is purely PDF, right? You can set up a tag to, and, or images. You can, uh, let's just use PDF for simplicity. You can set it up to trigger only on links that has, that links to a PDF. And you can use it to fire, say, with information such as uh, which page is it downloading from? What is the li link of the file? What's the file name? And uh, and what time they fire? Stuff like that. Yeah. Cross selling and upselling. Cross selling and upselling. Honestly, cross selling and upselling. That one is, I don't. <laughs> is yeah, I, I I do not. But is good tag manager enough, or do we need to have Adobe like to like No, no. Okay, so uh, cross selling and upselling is more of more on personalization set setup and stuff already. You use maybe Adobe Target or Optimizely to do it. Ot Optimizely. Optimizely, I'm not sure. Uh. Okay, actually go and check. It's optimizely is based on uh, volume. Optim. No, you can use analytics to determine uh, whether cross selling is effective or not. You can use that to determine whether it's effective. But to serve the cross selling content and stuff like that, uh, and you want to do it dynamically, the best way is to go through Optimizely or other personalization tools. So Optimizely, what they offer is uh, experiment, exper exp experimentation and stuff like that. Basically, trying to see whether certain products will sell more to certain people. Yeah. So, in the breaking of inside, you said the goal should be set up. Right? Yeah. So, okay, when I say goals to be set up. Yeah. So, this is more for your uh, analytics. Like, Right now, like what I say, right now you have a static page, uh, because or maybe it's for certain constraints, cost constraints or resource constraints, you only can set up a static site to say that hey, these are my products, but I can't sell it to them right now. But at the same time, you also you like to know maybe like how many people has downloaded the brochure of that uh, product, or how many people has signed up uh, to indicate interest and stuff like that. Uh, so this is the immediate goal that you are looking at, but. In the, and in the future, and it expands to say e-commerce, where you sell a product, product A or product B, or maybe umbrella or shoe or something like that, right? You want to see uh, whether the person has abandoned abandoned cart. Where is it? At which stage she has abandoned cart? Uh, and uh, why is it abandoned cart and there and stuff like that? You can use uh, that tool should opti optimally, optimally uh, uh, be able to do that as well. 
Sorry? Uh, that one, yes, that one is yeah. Is depending on is really what you really want from the from the tool. Tag manager is a way to just implement attacks. If you want to see which user buys what and stuff like that, is the is already the data, and that sh sh uh, should be in your analytics platform. If you are using Google Analytics, you draw from Google Analytics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tech manager and ISO improvement. Uh. Uh, from SEO people use tech managers not really eh. I don't think so. Do you Tommy? No right, yeah. As in even even my clients, the clients we uh the bigger, bigger clients where they have dedicated SEO teams, they don't use tech managers per se. Uh but if you want to start factoring things like site load speed and stuff like that, then tech manager it's is basically one of the things that they are consider they they, they will consider. Yeah, but mainly just to make sure that it serves the content as fast as possible. Yeah. Does it does <coughs> support Facebook analytics? You can put in as a third party tag. Yeah. So you heard of uh, Facebook? Yeah. So it's uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's something similar to uh, I mean, uh, what time is it? Something similar. Um. Yeah, it also fire events. So it's Facebook analytics, uh, yeah. uh, as well. So, um, okay, uh, like what you say, like he asked me a question about Facebook, Facebook ana analytics. You can use it to set it, go through a tech manager. And yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So does Google Tech Manager work with AdWords so that you can sort of like um, target users that are actually more towards various events? Yeah. So it works kind of... It works kind of in sense. So uh, Google Tech Manager obviously will have integration with Google AdWords. Yeah, the, they consider it as first party uh, integration. After all, they are the same company anyway. So, so as these <coughs> products are offered by the same company. So... Um, you can say maybe like let's say you have a uh, brochure downloads right or uh, and what what you might want to fire is a pixel or uh, AdWords or pixel to fire <coughs> when 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 someone downloads uh, the brochure so that in the future you can do a remarketing uh, do a better remarketing this is, this is what the Google Tech Manager is meant for yeah yeah I would have a question how do you handle uh Spam bots within your server constantly, and this way they produce false things. You filter them. <laughs> you filter them out. Yeah, you can filter them, but they are always new coming. Yeah, it is, it's, it's a never ending battle. Uh, can this be updated <coughs> somehow so you do not constantly have to filter them out? You, no. It's, uh, you know so right now, there's no way to go about doing that except to filter. To really filter them because what spam bots basically do is they they, they basically just um, take UA dash and just draw a random string and put a dash one in front or for the for for maybe the more opportunistic two three four five six right and then uh, they'll start spamming that link uh, on their on their own basically just 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 create a, a re request to be sent to Google Analytics. There's nothing you can do about it except to filter it because it's not under your control. Yeah. So the only way is just to filter them out, and uh, when the news when there are new ones coming out, just keep filtering out. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that, but that is that, that is something that um, people are asking me as well. Right? Yeah. Right. Any questions? No more. No more. Everyone good. Okay. Yeah. So what? Upload these slides. Yeah, so the resources links a lot of links. Uh, 
which uh, goes in depth. Like, what's a Google Tag Manager? There's a YouTube link on that. Uh, and yeah, stuff like this. Okay? So that's it from me. And